The Mozilla Foundation made 826 million US dollars in revenue in 2022. And you say, okay, why do I care about this? Well, the Mozilla Foundation is the owner of Firefox. It's one of the most common web browsers, but there's something interesting about it. It's free. So how did the Mozilla Foundation made 826 million US dollars in revenue out of something that's free, like Firefox, a web browser? Well, this is because they make a lot of money from royalties. Basically, Firefox is free, but search engines pay tons of money just to appear as the default option for Firefox or just to be considered as one of the pre-configured search engines for it. So they managed to make a lot of money out of a product that's free and that's great and that it's open source just through these partnerships and ma mainly royalties from search engines. Something interesting is that Firefox revenue is $1.1 million per employee since the Mozilla Foundation only has 750 employees. You might not know GitLab, but GitLab is a company that made 424 million US dollars in revenue in the year 2022. And GitLab is a company whose product is open source and mostly free. So GitLab is basically something like GitHub. If you don't know, GitHub is a website to store code and to work in a collaborative way where most of the software projects are hosted. GitLab is a similar tool, but with the difference that you can self-host it. That means that you cannot run your own instance of GitHub, but you can run your own GitLab instance. And you can do this for free. So how did they manage to make 424 million US dollars in revenue? Well, this is because they have an open core business model. An open core business model is one where the main product, the core of the product is open source and free. That means the main part of GitLab, the core of GitLab can be downloaded and used by anyone for free. But you then pay additionally for extra features. So if you want to have the newest features or if you want to have some advanced configuration options, then GitLab will require a subscription and that's how they make money. This subscription will be charged even if you self-host your GitLab instance. In return, they give you all of the features, the latest ones and the most advanced ones and support. In case you have any trouble, you can count with GitLab to help you out. Thanks to its business model, a lot of companies donate and contribute to GitLab. Because it's open source, companies and individuals can notify whenever there is a bug and they can also propose enhancements or bug fixes through merge requests. So basically, when someone fixes the code for you and sends you the result. So GitLab has a huge competitive advantage because it can benefit from the community and it also gives back and it also gives back to it because it offers its core functionality as free open source. Additionally to the open core model, so where the main part is open source and free and you pay for add-ons or advanced features, GitLab offers service as a service. So if you don't want to self-host your own GitLab instance, you can hire it through their website. This is another way they earn money. This is how GitLab made $424 million revenue in 2022. Have you ever used GitLab? If you have, you might have noticed that the features are much more advanced than GitHub. But unfortunately, it's not used that much. Should we move there? What are your opinions? Surprisingly, open source software is not always free. Open source software doesn't necessarily mean free software. It's free as in freedom, but it could have a cost. Nevertheless, most of the time, open source software happens to be free. But the freedom that we talk about when we talk about open software is the freedom to use it, analyze it, modify it and redistribute it. So whenever you get a copy of an open source software, 
That means you are free to use it. You are free to investigate the source code and learn how it works. You are free to edit it, modify it, fix some things, add some new features, and you are also able to redistribute it. So that means you could share it with your peers or you could put it online or you could even sell it, even if you got it for free. So you might get the open source software for free or for a price, but in any case, these four freedoms will be granted. The freedom to use it, inspect it, improve it, and redistribute it. Probably the most impressive open source software company is Red Hat. It was the first one to manage to make a huge revenue out of open source. And most of the products are free. So how did they manage to make 3.4 billion US dollars in 2018? Well, Red Hat has a lot of free open source products, but how they make money is by selling support, services, and trainings. There are a lot of Red Hat certifications. There are a lot of companies that hire Red Hat for their support because they know if they run into any trouble with their software, they will have the best documentation and also the best engineers from Red Hat to help them out. Apart from that, of course, there are trainings where Red Hat offers the best education material for their own certifications, but after all, for Linux knowledge in general. Red Hat managed to make 3.4 billion US dollars revenue in 2022, and it has brought to us a lot of great open source tools that we can use for free and that probably are making this video possible. We only have the revenue information until 2018 because after that it was acquired by IBM. And now it's making a lot more than that.